Well, hopefully he can't kill this. He's probably getting heat waved though. Oh, that's not a heat wave. Probably is an Igni then. However, we've got a second one. Hey, this is one matchup where I certainly thought it wouldn't work. So as we all know, Gwent is a game of skill, right? And uh, we're going to be expressing that today in the most effective way possible. And uh, we're going to be playing Enslave. Enslave 8. You know, everyone's favorite deck. Uh, the idea here is quite simple. Is we're not really going to play the game. So we're going to win round one, ideally. And if we do, we just keep discarding cards until we go down to three cards. We'll play Yon Calwait. We'll be in our starting hand because of how many tactics we have. And then uh, we play him. And in round two, we draw Letho Kingslayer at Fifione Colgrim, play Fifione, play Colgrim, play Letho, and hope they can't kill it. And that's the entire strategy of the deck. So uh, it'll be very, very quick to go through what we're playing here. Playing Enslave, we're playing Collar just to lock a pesky engine that could be a problem round one. If you want more value, you could play Advantage or get the Jin. These three we've already talked about, the entire point of the deck. And then we have every tactic that's under five for... That's five or less provisions in the entire game. <laughs> so there's not really a reason to pick them. We just put them all in. Um, the only things to mention are, will actually be the units then. So we have an Alba Armored Cavalry. Normally in a tactic heavy deck like this, you would play Magni Division. The problem with Magni Division is it plays a card and then draws you a card, which makes the Colgrim smaller. We don't really want to be doing that. So we're going to play an Alba Armored Cavalry. We do have two Venendel Elites, just because with so many tactics in our hand, they'll probably be quite good. And their point slam helps with round one a lot. Then we have some more tactics, as in all of them. And then we're playing two fire scorpions, two hunters, again for the locks to lock up pesky engines, then two Darylin soldiers. We don't actually want to play Darylin soldier. We just want to have more cards in our deck. And this adds two cards in our deck at the start of the game. So that is pretty much the entirety of the deck. Goals to win round one using the Enslave Leader, hope the opponent passes, just discard down to zero cards, or one card if you drew one of these guys. And then just round two, just play these and hope they don't answer them. Is this a good deck? Probably not. Does it win against some things? Yeah, if they don't have he Purify Heat Wave, for example, or they don't have multiple tall removals, this should just kind of automatically win. <laughs> Since everyone's complaining about the uh, Spring Equinox deck, they really don't run a Heat Wave. Or any way to stop a Colgrim. So ideally you match up against some of those and see how it goes. But it might be hard to win round one there. Anyway, it's probably as much as uh, talking as this deck actually deserves. Let's get into it and just do some games. This probably won't be a very long video. So Vampires is actually a deck this might work on. We just need to have enough locks for the Flutters. And we kind of have to hope he doesn't veil a flutter. If he veils a flutter, then bleeds us, we can't seize it. If we can't seize it, it's going to be too big. I mean, we could go assassination seize, I guess. Damage seize it. That would work. Seizing that's pretty good. Questions, what else do we do after? Let's just take it. Set up another engine. And then hope it's like Ren Free Vampires or something. Although they would have an Igni, which would kill one of our guys. One of our Colgrims. As long as our Colgrim behind the Defender 
Colgrim plus Defender doesn't equal 25 after the first turn, we could at least get the Letho off. Give him another one of these, why not? I don't think he has a way to boost this Necrat. You can get two more bleedings off. We have so many on this guy already. Take back the Flutter so he can't play it. We want him to play down to like as few cards as possible, ideally. Or just pass one of the two. Uh -oh. He's gonna straight up Heat Wave that Necrat. That may cost him the game. There's actually a very good chance that costs him the game. Bring this back so we can't incubus it later. We still need to win the round. So Plumard, he has another one in his deck. So it's non-devotion vampires, and they've played their heat wave. That's a good sign. We do need to win the round still. He doesn't look, he look, look like he wants us to. We have to lock this. We can do this for two bleeding, which is why we're playing this for a lock. So we take eight damage here, so we have to play two. That's not good. We take 12 damage then. Or not 12, we take. If we play two cards, we take three, six, nine, 10, 11. This is a five, six point play. Plus this is a six, that's 12. Theoretically we can get away with both of these. But that's it. If he passes here, we can play this and be okay. If he plays another card, we have to pass though. We take 10, or 9 dies, I guess. We take 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is worth 6. Plus 1 is 7. That's 24. It takes a bleeding. Okay, we can do this if we play this. Right, we take 9 damage. Go to 8. This puts us at 14. We do 1 to him. And that is the play that made us win the game, because that's probably a Regis. Well, Imprisonment's an unwinnable matchup, because they can just lock our Colgrim. And they have Vilgaforts. So the literal only chance to win this is if he just doesn't draw anything good. And fortunately, he probably will draw good things, because he has Cursed Scroll. 
They're really targeting harm or not harmony. They're really targeting symbiosis with this. We just don't find them. That's tragic. Let's just see what he's playing first. He also has poisons. If it's a ball. If we see an aristocrat, we're just out. We're also out if he plays Torres because he gets his own Colgrim and Kingslayer. Okay, Cultist is a little bit of a different story, though. Cultist is a little different. Let's remove this. The thing with Cultist is they still have two imprisonment locks, but it's harder for them to get through Defender. Interesting. The thing, though, is he beats the Colgrim round just by playing the Cultists. And then there's Prophet. Prophet will be an issue. We might just save, like, the Alba Armored Cavalry just to get hit by Prophet. Of course, that means we can't deal with this. To be fair, we can't deal with this anyway. And he has Vilgefords. So Vilgefords would get Kingslayer. So we can't play this till later. This is just a just a really annoying matchup. I think we just have to lock this. We really don't want to play Nilfgaard. I mean, I don't know if he's playing Vilgefords, but usually Vilgefords is in a lot of decks. I don't know if cultists usually play it, because I don't really pay attention to cultists, because I think it's a stupid deck. We can play our Venendal Elite now, at least. Although the problem is the Profit. Like, Profit is such an issue. And so is the threat of Vilgeforts. I guess we just do it. I don't see how he can win this. See his locks here. There's Tome. We'll be playing with Tome. Teleportation. I guess we have to remove this guy again then. I mean, we can just play Assassination with Arcane Tome. Even though like it thins us a card, but he also thinned a card. We enact the will of the cosmos. We really just want him to pass. <laughs> I don't think we can do it. I don't think we can win this anyway. Because I think even if we do nothing, like even if we get everything we want, he'll still just outvalue us with um, the cultist scenario. Spin the wheel. Set the stage. So we need to kill that again. I think we have another assassination, right? Only let's get to six. You know, maybe they don't have a Veluga Forts. Or a Heat Wave. Or something. He's good. Let's go spotter, I guess. Oh, well, there's the end of this game. There's the Vilga Forts. That's uh, no covering back from that. Because he used Vilga Forts' Fifione, and then he. Um, Removes our Colgrim.
We might have to alter our plans. But how do we do a round two bleed with this? I don't know. I feel like the forts with the leaders means we can't play our normal strategy, though. No way it will work. And we know he has the Vilga Forts because we saw on the top of his deck. I don't know how we get don't know how we get him to leader either. We still can't play Yan. Do you have anything worthwhile in here? No. Go fire scorpion then. Maybe we can use a lock on it. We need him to use both locks this round, I think, and the Vilga Forts. I just don't see how that's possible. There's one. And there's still Prophet. Because Prophet has to go on Fifion. Okay, I guess we have to do it this way. Everything in his hand should be a cultist at this point. But he hasn't got it on anything in his deck. The thing is, if he plays this scenario, we can't stop it anyway. That's the problem. We do have one more lock we can do off of Remedy. Okay, he's going to play that. I guess this is our remedy. The stars align. Hmm. My prescription, a bit of blood let me. Hmm. Try and think about how we deal with Vilga Forts. We need to go tall before we need to go tall, make him feel he needs to play tempo, and then go. I don't see it. Don't see it. I think we boo hurt and seize this. Then we can't seize. It doesn't matter at this point. We need him to Vilga Forts. We really, like, basically need him to DS. Okay, that's a good start. He's Vilga Forged. He still has a lock. But we have we have things to do now. We have things we can do. Now we can play our Yawn safely. I shall not repeat Amir's mistakes. We just play down as many cards as we can. And then he has one lock. Hopefully that's insufficient. Like hopefully he can't kill our defender with what he has. Pretty easy amnesty here, I think. Watch close. He gets to play a deacon here. Hopefully he doesn't get enough points that we'd have to play that we are like, forced into like hopefully we, we can play these and force him to play another card. Honestly, we're just gonna play this no matter what, because our smaller hand shouldn't really help or shouldn't hurt us that much. You're not 
We just want more turns of Colgrim as it is, basically. You should pass here. Oh, he's actually going to play a card. That's intriguing. We're just going to hope Vilgefort is his only re removal, though. Like, if he can't get through Fifione, we're fine. It's just the profit's scary, but he'd have to profit before Fifione. And then at least Fifione would still have Defender on it. But it would die to a imprisonment. And we know he's playing um, Hunter. Let's just hope he's not playing Prophet. No Prophet. Ideally, you draw like one of, like a Hunter or something that can actually tank the lock. But we, we might get a Venadol Elite. That should be it, right? And we're looking for a unit there. Oh, do we play both Venendal's elites? I didn't realize that. Yeah, there's the Prophet. So like I said, we can either drop this, and then hope he doesn't have a lock for this, or we can go this early, then this, and this. This will be worth 20. Let's just do this early. And then go this, this. I feel much safer that way. Because we know he's playing the Aristocrat guy. And he's only played one. And he's only got five cards in his deck. So if he wanted it, he'll have it. And we can also defend this row, which is nice. This is the moment of truth. Does he have a removal or a purify? I would not expect him to, but you never know. Oh, we're looking pretty good here. He could Igni us, but there's nothing we can do about that. Is it Dandelion? Infuse. You can't copy anything with that. My duty? I guess he can he can do this. That was such a good top deck. Although this won't yeah, because he can kill it with imprisonment. But that locks it though. So it doesn't really help him that much, I guess. Unless that's a cultist. Yep, he got it. G G. Such a good top deck with the dandelion. It was an essentially unwinnable matchup once we saw the Vilga Forts, but we tried our best. If you didn't get the top deck, we would have been okay. Reckless Flurry, another control deck. I we have only played control decks today, and we cannot this is not against a control deck. This is not a deck we use against controls. This is a deck we use against stuff like point slam and you know, things like Equinox, which is why we've built it. We can't find anyone. It's very tragic. We keep playing bomb decks, which remove our defender and then heat wave our Fifione. Our movement decks that just move him. Or other Nilfgaard decks that make their own Colgrims with Torres. Okay, this is a Shoop deck. Shoop decks can destroy a random unit, so that's not great. And then they also have access to Flurry. See if we can get one of these guys on the board. I don't think we can, but we'll try. Oh, 
she's dead. That's good though. If he has two leaders, he can just double leader to kill our Fifion. Best drown yourself with those damn nets. Play the elite. Oh, we're gonna troll porter down now. We have to seize that. If we troll porters with this out, we can't win the round. Should go to eight here with the mask. That we can seize it at eight, which is good. Comes the delirium. What are we spawning? Sea serpent. Made a crow clan druid. I see. Let's get rid of these just in case he does actually have an alchemy. We do have a good obsidian mirror. I just want, was hoping he'd use a little half order so we could put on the rail where maybe we would keep this alive, get more guys out. Oh, Uma's curse into Sove. Nice. Nice. You know, he's just too skilled. <laughs> he's just too skilled. What are we getting? A bear? Well, now we have to try and boost that guy. Guess there's no troll porter. You thought you want to play Uma's curse first. Well, we're really gonna hope this is not a tall removal. Okay, it's just a bear, that's fine. I think his shoop is such an issue. I guess we do this now. Does the shoop 13 damage kills a defender? And the Shoop Destroyer random unit kills the defender and can kill the Colgrim behind the defender. And there's also the Shoop Lock. If he kills our defender, it plays a Purify. He has Scald, Squirrel, and Sea Serpent. Sea Serpent's probably going to be the most valuable in a couple turns. Oh, I guess this is a soldier. We could ointment the Carrick City Guard for an extra point. That's cute. There's the Shoop. Resilience, of course. We can still win the round.
Oh, I was trying to hit Knight. Maybe he passes with the resilience. Oh no, he's just gonna go for the big wolf pact. So this goes to 67. And then we have Remedy. Okay, Remedy Squirrel. Let's do this. I then we can get rid of the um, Sheep Stay Off. Hopefully he passes. And there's an Aaron Dyke. Well, GG, once again. He's gonna go Lippy or whatever. I guess we could Kingslayer the Shoop. See what he does. Except the deploy is the resilience, so we can just get a blank 10. Okay, he's still still lippy, right? Take the squirrel. Let's get rid of the sheep stay off. Then we've got to play this. Let their blood break their bounds and spirit. Usually there's like a heat wave and a um what's it called in here? A muzzle. And there's always the Fakusha. Or not Fakusha, the Magic Compass can make Heart of Terror. This is pretty bad. My prescription, a bit of blood setting. We need him to not have the compass set up yet. We're gonna make him a Lucene. That's nice. If he plays any long ships, we also lose. Okay, that can't get harder of tear anymore. That's nice. Well, hopefully he can't kill this. He's probably getting heat waved though. Oh, that's not a heat wave. Probably is an Igni then. However, we've got a second one. Hey, this is one matchup where I certainly thought it wouldn't work, but he played the... He couldn't get his compass. Alright. Sidle Fury. If this is raids, the round one tempo is usually pretty low. Other than the leader sove. But the leader sove is going to be a problem because it most likely just gives him enough points to win the round.
I really wanted to play things without high tempo round one plays. Onward, sons of Looks like that won't be the case. Hopefully it's Raid since this is the only high tempo thing he has going for him. If it's like the beast thing, I guess he probably has enough points with Kelpie and such. Okay, there's a raid card. That's good. It's a good start. Coded weapons gives him another one, but then he can't replay this one. Otherwise, we have to play something else in our hand. I guess we can lock this. And then seize it so we can't play it again. Let's do that. I just don't know how we deal with the Sove. It's going to be the issue. We have a 16 point potential in Slave. It's just not going to be big enough, I don't think. And I don't think he's going to he's going to have anything particularly large. I mean, we could always enslave that if we need to. Let's boost that up. He's probably a uh, Brockfire Warrior guy, so that should take two damage at some point. Or at least a rain hit or something. Shield this one too. Champion's charge is oh, okay. Let's show off the idea here. So now we just take our cards and we go like this. Just put them all in the graveyard, like so. And we draw our cards. Also worth noting that he could have Heart of Terror, which is very scary and hopefully doesn't have it. He only has two guys in here. So what I think we do is you start off by taking his raid guy. And then there's one card to revive. Then we just go boom, boom, boom. This is the whole point of the deck. I never claimed this was good. I don't think anyone will ever claim this is good, but it's kind of funny. Could have seized this guy here. All right, so that's not dead yet. Play the Colgrim. And the point of why you discard all your cards around one is so that you get the adrenaline condition for Colgrim activated faster. Because you have adrenaline when you're... Right, you get the adrenaline when you have so many cards in your hand. And if they don't, well, it doesn't matter that we have no cards. Because we get the points each turn anyway. It doesn't matter he has a ton of cards. At this point, there's no reason not to just split this up. And then we can seize here. But honestly, we should, because the thing is that could happen here is he has a giant tempo, with tempo play with Sov and Fury, and now we just sit here and watch the Colgrams and hope you can't kill him. It's called gameplay. Only the best gameplay. Blood for 
There's the champion's charge. We knew he had one of those. He still has to kill this other one. So the only way I can imagine him doing it is he actually has Heart of Terror. And they you like 95% of the time don't have it. Twelve of turns is quite a bit. That's the last thing can bring back, right? So no Fakusha. Fakusha can't bring anything back now. And neither can um on crate. And there it is. There's the tier. We get twelve more. Should have leadered. I forgot about tier. It, tier doesn't kill it, but it resets it. So I guess it's close enough. He's gonna win this. Unfortunate. But uh, this is a uh, not the matchup we're looking for. There's nothing to bring back with that. But he's gonna win now. GG. Wish. This could be winnable. Going first is a really big advantage for us then. We don't want to draw that yet. We want to play everything else out of our hand. The thing here is Manticore. Manticore is a problem. So it's some kind of Witch's Sabbath deck. Interesting. Do this. If we play something else, we could potentially get an amnesty off on it. Giving him another card doesn't really help. Okay, hopefully we can amnesty this one. Good, he didn't use it. We have two locks left, and then against um, Death Wish, Obsidian Mirror is pretty good. Okay, I mean, you can just kill it and then boost anything. You wouldn't want to hurt us, would you? See, what do we want? We want to lock it. I think we just do this. Good old Toad. This is just an eight. This is going pretty well so far. Onward, sons of Nirvgard. Now we just hope there's no Manticore heat wave. Or Wispus incantation heat wave. Let's see what we get. Order. 
I'm guessing he has a way to deal with this. Like Manticore Heat Wave works. Manticore Lock works. At least this will be bigger than the actual defender. So if he doesn't Manticore, it just kills the defender now. There's Detlef. We seize Detlef. He comes back, unless he leaders it. Okay, we still seize it, so we can't hit it with the um, one card. The Arrakis Queen. So we seize this. We drop this. And then we just sit here and see what happens. Just hope there's no way for him to kill it. So he didn't win. He doesn't get the infinite Dagon possibility. I mean, if there's any type of removal, tall removal, we're going to get destroyed, but that's how this deck works. There you go. Classic gameplay. So that's the deck. Is it any good? Not really, but it's pretty funny. Um, really looking for Equinox. We just didn't find the matchups we we're looking for today. We didn't play a single Equinox one, so that was unfortunate. But anyway, this deck's just like a funny meme deck, and if you want to try it out, go ahead. If people are playing things without good removal options... Oh, we played a lot of movement, too. Movement's a huge problem, because the grill attack, they can just move your defender, then just kill your card. So, really bad matchups today. But hopefully you guys enjoyed watching anyway, and we'll see you in the next one. There's not really much we can do to adjust the deck, because it just is what it is. And you can't even put in, like, a Purify for the Colgrim, because then your Colgrim doesn't get any points. So, it is what it is. Hopefully you enjoyed watching, though. And there it is. Thunder. So I, I don't think we can do anything here. There it is. He has double dive. Yeah, so that's GG. That'll be it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. And you can check out some more videos over here. And thanks for watching.